Hey, how's it going? This is Hellbent, and welcome to Auto Hotkey GUI Mini Tutorial number 25, I believe. Um, this is going to be a continuation from the GUI Mini Tutorial number 21, where I showed you how to uh, save a bulk text to a file and then read from that file to s and reload it back into a GUI. In this one, we're going to assume that. Uh, we want to save multiple different fields. So we, let's say we have multiple different uh, pieces of information that we want to save to a file. And then later on, we might want to read those from the file and then load them back into a GUI as separated values. So this is part of a series of videos that show you multiple different ways that you can use text documents to actually uh, save and load information. Um, so this is the second part. In this one, we're going to be continuing on with a pre-built GUI that I had created for tutorial number 21. If you had taken tutorial number 21, you already have that file, so we're just going to build from that. If you haven't taken tutorial number 21, uh, what you're going to need to do to complete this is in the description, there's going to be a link to this paste. So what you're going to do is go down to the very bottom, and there's an area called raw paste data. Select anywhere in there and press Control A to highlight it and then Control C to copy it into your clipboard. Once it's in your clipboard, you can paste it into your new script. Save it, run it, and you'll end up with this. So <clears throat> if you had taken the first part, in the first part we had worked on the bulk save. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to work on the delimited save where we have five different edit fields that we're going to put some information into and then we're going to save that to a file. And then later on what we're going to do is we're going to take that file, we're going to read from it, and then load it back into the individual edit fields. So let's go through it one at a time. Uh, some of the stuff if you had taken part... Uh, tutorial number 21, you will just need to edit a few things. Uh, you don't need to start from scratch. You can just edit a few things to go along with this. So what I'm going to do is up here I have a list of variables. I'm just going to copy those so that way I have an easy reference. And then down in my labels section, I'm just going to paste it in somewhere so that way I can quickly see what the different variables are are that I'm going to be using. So let's go through it one at a time. The first thing we're going to do is as we, if we select different radio buttons it's going to unlock or enable us to use certain portions of it. So this this GUI is broken up into two sections. One is for the bulk save portion where when we select bulk save it'll unlock a bunch of different buttons and edit boxes and check boxes etc. And then if we select the delimited save it'll relock those and then unlock the ones that are associated with our delimited portion of this. So let's go ahead and write in the code to test which radio button we've selected. So if I go up into my GUI, one of the first sections in it is these two radio buttons. And they are attached to a label called Select Section. So if I come down to my, my labels, I look for the label that is called select section and what I'm going to do is because we're, t we're clicking on our radio buttons what we need to do is update the value of the variables that are associated with them so that's the first thing we're going to do we're going to come up in here and we're going to do GUI submit no hide Okay, so now if we click on one of those radio buttons, they're going to get a 0 or a 1. Now what we're going to do is we're going to test to see which one of those variables has a 1 or, or a 0. <clears throat> so I'm going to make it so that way it's the same as those that followed the first part. I'll do it in the same order. So we're going to say if this, do this, else... We can just do an else, but we're going to do an else if. Else if. If I had done it differently in the first part, just do it, keep it the same way. Um, so the first thing we're going to check is we're going to check to see if the bulk save is the thing that's selected. So if we select that, it's going to say if that variable, so that is radio select bulk. Let me make sure I highlight it. 
I'm a slow typer so I like to copy and paste. So I'm going to paste the name of the variable in and I'm going to say if it equals 1 we're going to do this stuff in here. And like I said if you took the first part you already have most of the stuff right you're just going to edit inside of these whatever I add in this time. The next thing we're going to test is if it's selected delimited. So if we select this button then it's going to do this stuff. So we're going to say if that equals 1. Okay and we're going to work in here for now. So if we select the delimited save what we want to do is unlock these five edit boxes then these two buttons and then this button down here. So I wrote out the variables so that way they have names that are very easy to check out. So EB for edit box and then DS for delimited save. So it's edit box for the delimited save portion number one. So that would be this first edit box. And then number two, number three, number four, number five. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do when we select that delimited save is we're going to enable these currently disabled controls. So to do that, we just type in GUI control. The subcommand that we're going to be using is enable. And then what are we going to be enabling? We're going to be enabling the variable, the control that's associated with different variables. So here we have edit box delimited save one okay and to save time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my cursor inside so you see how it's flashing and I'm gonna press control D to duplicate it six times so five for the edit boxes and then I'll do one for the buttons and then I'll copy that afterwards so one two three four five six okay and then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the last digit on each of those so this is number two number three, number four, number five. And this last one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it with the variables that are associated with these buttons. So let's go into the code. And as I can see, because I separated my GUI into different sections, I can go to the delimited area and I can look for buttons. And there we go. We have two buttons. So one, two. And the first button has a variable named button 4, the second one has a button 5, and then the last thing we want is display delimited text. If I come down here I can see that that is display delimited text which is button number 7. So we have button 4, button 5, and button 7. So let's go ahead and enable those. To save time I'm just going to duplicate those and change this to button 5 and this to button 7. <clears throat> okay, so now that we have those enabled, what we need to do is, dis if we actually have bulk save selected, we want to disable them again. So I'm just going to copy all this code here. And once again, if you took the first part of this tutorial, this would be, so right here where I'm enabling the the delimited save ones you would also have the code in here in the same conditional that disables these controls and then up here you would have enabling these controls but this time we're going to disable these controls so instead of enabling it we are going to disable and to save time all I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on disable which will highlight the word disable then I'm going to copy it and then do paste that into here. Okay, we have that done, so let's run. So now if I select delimited save, it should unlock all of these controls. And if I hit bulk save, it should relock them. Okay, that's out of the way. Next thing we're going to do is something really quick to get it out of the way is this reload button. If you took the first part of this tutorial, you already have it done, so don't worry. Okay, so if I go and I look at this part here, which it's, I've been uh, nice to separate it, so I have three buttons, one, two, three. If I look for the button with the text reload on it, 
I can see that this is going to a label called Reload GUI, which is right here. I'll just expand that. I don't actually need this return here because as soon as I press that, as soon as I trigger this label, it's going to reload the GUI. So it's never actually going to hit this return, but I'll leave it in there anyways. Who cares? And I'm just going to type reload. So when I hit that button, it's going to trigger this label, which is going to cause this whole program, this whole script to get reloaded. So let's test that right now. I'll move it over here. I hit reload and it reloads it. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to, now that we have these edit boxes enabled, what we need to do is make it so that way if we type anything in them, we're going to update any variable that's associated with those controls with whatever we type in. So if we type something in, it's going to get stored in the variable that's associated with our edits. If you're not familiar with this, uh, I have done tons of tutorials on this in the past we're not going to be covering that here so let's go and look so in my delimited area I see that I have a bunch of different edits and they are attached to a label called submit all and all this label all that I need to do with that is just do my GUI submit when every single time I type something so if I type something it triggers that label and it submits it type submit type submit type submit type submit and so on so in here and if you took the first port part of this tutorial, you might already filled this in. I'm not sure. I'd have to look up at the GUI to see. But if not, just type it in. GUI submit no hide. And that's it. That's all that label is going to do. So every single time we type something, that variable gets updated with the values. Okay. Now that we have that out of the way, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take, if we type something in here, we're going to take this information and we're going to write it to a file. So when we press this button, it's going to take what it, all the values that we store in those variables and write it to a file. So if I look, if I look, I can see that I have a label that's called save delimited to file which I, I know that's the right one, but I can go back up into my GUI and in the delimited area I can look for the buttons and the button is saved to file so I look for the button with the text saved to file on it so this is the text that's on that button and I can see that this when I press that it's triggering a save delimited to file so that's the label I want and here it is here so this is the one we're going to be working with because we're going to be saving this to file, what we need to do is, because of the way we're doing this, we what we want to do is, if, if that file already exists, we want to delete it. Because we don't want to just have multi, we don't want to have uh, whatever we saved getting added to what was saved before, and then that gets added to what was saved after that, and then after that, and then after that, right? What we want to do is have a completely clean slate every single time we hit this save. So it's a brand, it's basically a brand new file. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to delete the old version of that file. And the name of the file that we're going to use, last time we had used a file called bulk.txt, this time, because we're working with the limited save values, we're going to call it delimited.txt. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to file delete, file delete, and then the name of the file that we're going to delete. And like I said, it's going to be called delimited.txt. The first time we run this, this file doesn't exist, so it's not going to delete anything, but that's not going to be a problem. But if it does exist, it'll delete it for us. Okay, now that we know that we don't have a file called delimited.txt, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file called delimited.txt. And the way we do that is we just type in file append. And the reason this comes to the whole reason why we deleted it before. So if we already had that file delimited.txt, when we do file append, all it's going to do is add to the end of that, whatever the last line of our text document was, it'll just append more stuff to it. And then if we do it again, it'll append more stuff to it. That's not what we want. We want to have fresh values, right? So that's why we delete it. And then now we're going to append with our new information. Now, the information that we're going to be appending to it is, remember when we typed in here, 
this stuff gets stored into a variable and that variable is these variables right here so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna write to our file or append to our file whatever the values that we have stored in these okay so we're gonna do the first one I'm gonna do this as an expression so to write this as an expression all I need to do is start with a percent mark and then put a space and now I'm gonna put the name of those variables so I'm gonna do edit box delimited save one so whatever's ty typed in here is going to get saved but now I want to be able later on be able to separate these edit boxes so I need a way to actually write it to the file so that way when I read it later on I can actually separate say that this one is for this information this one is for this information and the way we're going to do that is with a comma separated values so that way later on we can do a parse so <clears throat> comma separated values are very simple all we need to do is pick a character or a symbol that we're not going to be typing in here so we need to pick something that we know we're never going to type in here so let's say for whatever reason maybe we want to put commas in here maybe we want to put uh, semicolons in here maybe we want to put ampersands in here right we're gonna pick something that we know that we're never gonna put in here okay so for our example all we're gonna do is we're gonna use uh, let's use an asterisk so we know that when we type something in here we're never gonna have an asterisk because now we're gonna use the asterisk to separate edit box one from the value from edit box 2 and then edit box 3 edit box 4 so when we write to that file we're gonna write it with that comma separated value in our case it's the asterisk so to put our asterisk because we've declared this as an expression we need to put our asterisk as a in quotes if we didn't want to do it in quotes we can create a variable that has the value of an asterisk but you don't want that's that's stupid to do that so we're gonna put in quotes we're gonna put the value the character or symbol that we're gonna be using to separate our values so like I said we're gonna use an asterisk and then the next thing beside that we're gonna print out the value for the second edit box or we're gonna write the value of the second edit box so edit box delimited save two and then once again we're going to put an asterisk between that and the third one and then an asterisk to do the oops to do the fourth one and then last is the fifth one now because this is our last one we don't need to add a asterisk after it because there's not going to be anything print written to our file after it but likewise we could also we could also let's say if we were just doing append or whatever we could technically add in this last asterisk but it's not going to cause any we're not going to have any issues with it either way so we'll get rid of it so there we go we've deleted the previous version of that file and now we're gonna append a new copy of it with the value of whatever we type in edit box one edit box two edit box three edit box four edit box five and to display what it's gonna look like I'll just do something very simple here and when it we when we press that button it's gonna write a file now that looks like this and that's what our file is going to look like okay and then later on what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this asterisk we're going to copy this piece of information to a variable and then we're going to get rid of this asterisk and then we're going to go to our next variable and write this stuff and then we're going to go to this position write this and then this and then this so as you can see we're separating out our different edit boxes with these asterisks and like I said in another tutorial later on I'll show you different ways that we can do this but uh, this is the way we're doing it in this one okay uh, so there we go we've written to our file whatever we stored in those variables so we're done with that now and we'll run a test of that and we'll check out that file 
So like I said before, right now we do not have a file called delimited.txt. So let's go ahead and save and run. And we'll unlock that. And I'm going to put 1122334455. And now when I hit save to file, it's going to trigger this label, which is going to delete any previous version. There isn't one yet, but if it was, it would. And then it's going to write to the file the contents of our variables. And if I look, I should now... Oh, my bad. I forgot one last step. Now that we've, we're appending, but we haven't just, we, I haven't said what I'm appending to. So the next parameter is after a comma, I'm going to put the file that we're going to be writing to. That's my bad. Delimited.txt. Okay, there we go. That's fixed. So let's run that. Unlock those controls. One, one. To two, save to file, and now we should have. Why did I close that? Okay, there we go. Now we have that text document called delimited dot text, and we have one once asterisk two two asterisk, and so on. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is before we rewrite it, before we uh, load it back from our, our text document back into our GUI, which is the main purpose, what we're going to do instead is first we're going to make it so that way instead of us having to constantly come over here and then open it up the file like this, what we're going to do instead is we're going to make it so that way we can do that right from our GUI. So we're going to display our delimited.txt file and if I look down here, I can see that I have a label that's called run delimited file. So I can be pretty sure that that's the correct label for it. If not, I can look up in my uh, GUI, but I, I'm, I'm confident that this is the label. I named it so that way it makes sense. So in here, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to run that text document. And now the thing is with this is I need to make sure that that text document exists before I try to run it. Otherwise, I'm going to get an error. So let's see. We're going to run, and all we're going to run is delimited.txt. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And if I unlock that, if I hit display delimited text, it should put up that notepad with that document on it. And there we go. Now, like I said, if that file didn't exist, so the first time we ran this, if it didn't exist, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this. I think, if I remember correctly, we're going to get, let me run it again. We're going to get an error because it's going to try to, it's trying to run a, a file that doesn't exist. So if I hit this, there we go. We have an, we try to run a file that doesn't exist. So we need to make sure that that file exists. So I'm just going to save create a new file and there we go okay <clears throat> next what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it so that way six months from now or a year from now or tomorrow or in five minutes we're gonna take something that we save to a text document and we're gonna display that those values onto our GUI Okay, so it doesn't have to be the file that we created. It could be some other file that we're reading from, and we want to display those values into our GUI. Right? This this example is just to show you both ways how to actually write to the file and how to actually read from files. But let's assume that we didn't create this file; it's some other file, and all we really want to do is we want to take that file and display it in our GUI, and we want to separate it into different areas or different edit boxes. So in our case, we have five different areas, five different edit boxes. So we're going to take a document that has five different sections or five different delimited values. Okay, to do that, we're going to use our load from file.
once again I've named all the labels things that make sense for what they're doing so I can see that right here it says load delimited file so I can be reasonably confident that when I press this button it's triggering this label so let's come in here and there's multiple ways that we can do this um, in this for this tutorial what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that file and we're gonna load everything in it as a bulk so remember how before I wrote out that the text document has like one an asterisk a two asterisk three asterisk we're gonna take all literally all of that stuff and we're gonna put that into a variable the way we do that is we uh, is it read file damn read file nope nope it's file read okay file read so we're gonna read from the file delimited dot text and like I said we're gonna store it into a variable now this variable it doesn't really have to it doesn't really do much and like once it's once we're done with it we're fine with it being tossed aside so we're just gonna call it uh, when I usually use these kind of variables that they're just doing one quick task and that's it doesn't really matter anything else I usually give them a name starting with the word temp right because it's just a temporary variable to dump something into it and then right away I'm gonna use it and put it into something that's more permanent so I'm gonna call this temp and we're gonna call it uh, temp file data okay so that's the name of the variable temp file data and then what are we reading from the now we need the name of the file that we're going to be reading from in our case the file that we're going to be reading from is that file that we created called delimited.txt so we're going to read from that file and put it into this temp variable as is so it's going to have all the asterisks and everything like that next thing we're going to do is we are actually going to parse or separate each of the values based on that delimited that uh, asterisk so it's going to loop through it it's going to read everything up until it encounters our thing that we're using to separate the values or our asterisk so it's going to read through everything until it encounters that asterisk and it's going to put that value into a variable that's uh, built this is a built-in variable for auto hotkey and it's called a loop field so as it loops through this it gathers all the information it needs up until that asterisk and puts it into this temporary variable called a loop field and then we're gonna take that value and put it into a more permanent variable which is going to be our edit box so whatever we want to display so for our example we're just going to put it into the same variable name as our edit box is associated with so the first one is going to be we're going to put it into the variable edit box to limit it save one so that way it gets loaded into that so let's go ahead and see how we do that so all we're going to do is we're going to type in loop and then when if you have the site for auto hotkey you'll get a bunch of these different things that you can do with loop and the one we're going to be doing with this is the parse so later on we're going to look at different things that we can do with uh, different ways that we're going to be parsing things um, so in this one we are going to parse and then the input variable so we're going to parse and what we're going to be parsing is the value that we put into this temp variable so remember we hit the button it reads from the file and loads it to a temporary variable which contains all the information it doesn't it hasn't separated it this is what we're doing now now we're separating it all right and how are we going to parse this or how are we going to separate the information and the way we're going to separate this information is by using our asterisk so the delimited uh, the delimiter that we're going to be using is an asterisk if for example let's say that we were typing something out here and let's say we added a space let's say if if every time it encounters a space we don't want it in we don't want to write those back to our GUI we want to get rid of any spaces or anything like that or some other character what we can also do is we can have another field here so let's say let's say if I used um, a comma 
So let's say I don't want to have any commas when I when I go in there. No, let's use something else. Let's uh let's go with uh, ampersands. Let's say if I don't want any ampersands. If I wrote ampersands to the file when I display it back, I want to get rid of those. The way I get rid of them, and this isn't have to do with how it's delimiting or how it's separating our values. This is just something that it, if it encounters this character, get rid of this character, right? So I would just put in an ampersand. So when it writes this to file, it would write it all literally. And then beside that, it would have our asterisk. When it reads it back, or when it, we separate it back, we're going to separate it based on the asterisk, but if it encounters any ampersands, get rid of them. Okay, so that's the omitted characters. We don't have any omitted characters, so we're just going to leave it like that. And then we are going to come into our loop. When we come into our loop, what we're going to do is, like I said, each time it goes through this, it's going to take, it's going to read the information in that temporary um, <clears throat> variable. It's going to read all the information up until it encounters that asterisk, right? And that's going to get stored in a built-in variable called a loop field. What we're going to do is we're going to take that, that value that's in that loop field and we're going to put it into our, our edit box variables. Now the way that I wrote these edit box variables, I've made it so that way we can use a pseudo array to load them back up. So instead of me having to type out um, multiple different conditionals to load this back in, what we can do instead is we can just type out the, the name of the variable edit box delimited save and then instead of me typing out one what I'm going to do instead is use a built-in variable to as a placeholder so I'm going to use the current index so an index counts how many times this loop has gone through so the first time it goes through the variable a index has a value of one the second time it loops through it a index will have a value of two and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that value that's for that a index as a placeholder for these one two three in the variables name so in here I'm going to put it in percent marks a index so me typing out this is the same as if I had typed out this. And then the next time it runs through the loop, it'll be as if I typed out this one, and then so on and so forth. All right? So this is a very easy way using a pseudo array to store all the information into those variables. And this variable is going to equal, like I said, whatever we got as it gathers the information up until that asterisk. So whatever it get in, whatever data it has up until it encounters that asterisk is going to get stored in this variable a loop field. So we're going to say whatever's stored in that variable a loop field, store that now into the edit box variable. Once we have it stored in there, what we're going to do is we're going to update our GUI with that information. So we're going to type GUI control. We don't need a subcommand, so we leave that blank, but we need the controls name. So the variable that we've associated with the control is going to be the exact same as this line here. So the first time, once again, a index is going to equal one. So me typing in, if I type in this, it's the exact same as if I type in this but the next time it loops through it'll be as if I typed in the second one so I don't have to like I said I don't have to type in one two three four five six seven eight it's just doing it on its own by me using referencing the index so now that I've said okay GUI control this is the control do something with that control what do I want to do with that control I want to up uh, display a value. Now I could display some something literal, right? And it'll display that. But what I that's not really what I want. What I want is whatever it had picked up from this loop field variable is what I want to display. And currently that's stored in that variable here. So to display to display the value of that variable there, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to display it as an expression. So I'm going to put a percent mark, then a space, and then I'm going to display the value that's stored in edit box uh, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. And then that's it. We're done. So we've taken values and written them to a variable. And then we've saved that to a file. When we save it to the file, it deletes the previous version of that file and then writes all the contents of those variables side by side, separated by asterisks, to that file. Later, when we load from that file, we're going to take that file and put it into a temporary variable that has all of these vari all the values side by side, non-separated. Then what we're going to do is we're going to separate those values based on whenever it encounters our asterisk. It's going to load those into our variables that's associated with those controls and then we're going to update that control with that value. So let's go ahead and create something new. Uh, I think we have everything that we need for this so let's just do this. So I've updated the edit box variables with these values. Now I'm going to save that to a file. Now that I've saved it to a file, I'm going to display that file to make sure that it's actually written to it. Here I can see that it's written to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to pretend that it's six months later. So it's six months later now. I actually want to see what did I have saved into that file. So I'm going to unlock it and I'm just going to load from that file. And there we go. And that's it. Uh, I will see you on the next one. The next one in this tutorial series is we'll probably look at another way that we can write to a file using something other than CSVs. Um, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, see you on the next one.